welcome to uh, those who are joining us online. Uh, what a blessing and a joy to be gathered here together this morning. If you're surprised to see me standing before you this morning, nobody's more surprised than I was. <laughs> At 7 o'clock this morning, I received a call, and it was actually from, from Keith Hoyle uh, asking me if it would be possible for me to be here today because Pastor Joyce uh, isn't feeling well. Uh, so he said he didn't know if it was a bug or his cooking. Uh, I prefer to think that she has picked up one of the bugs that, that just happens, you know, school starts and germs start flying, and, and so she's just not feeling well this morning, and so uh, we want to hold our pastor, Pastor Joyce, and in prayer this day uh, for her healing. So, and I know we had, you know, today was, I'm sure she was disappointed to not be here because today was, uh, we had our rally day, and so we're kicking off our fall season, and so it's just, uh, as we have this change of seasons, not only in the weather, but in the life of the church, uh, we're just grateful for new opportunities uh, to come back together. So as we prepare to come together uh, this day, uh, let's pause and take in our prelude as we prepare our hearts to worship our God. Please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. Do you not know? Have you not heard? He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will walk and not faint. Please stand and remain standing for the opening hymn.
join me in the opening prayer. O oh God, we have come together this morning to worship you and to give you praise. We thank you for making every day new. We praise you for the goodness of your creation. Thank you for the joys and blessings you have sent to us and to continue to send. Help us, Lord, to feel you near us throughout our lives and to serve you with our whole hearts. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> We are offered this opportunity to give back to our God out of the bounty that is given to us. Gracious, loving Lord, we come with grateful hearts for all the ways that you care for us. And now we, out of our hearts overflowing with gratitude, we give back to you a portion of the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We ask that you might bless these offerings, that they may be used to continue to follow your will and to indeed new, do a new thing, not only in our individual lives, but in the life of your church. We ask it in the name of our blessed Savior, Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Well, everyone, we've got a beautiful day going on outside. I hope you would agree. It's a little on the cool side. But compared to the heat and humidity we've had recently, hey, we can't complain, right? Nice sun shining outside. I was at the early service this morning. We are coming into the uh, prayer time. I was receiving prayer requests from the congregation. And at some point, Keith raised his hand and he said, Pastor, you, you're not aware of this, but while you've been asking for prayer requests, there has been a hummingbird behind you. There was a floral arrangement there on the altar uh, and came up to your shoulder two times. So, you know, when we leave this place, you know, think about all of the beauty that we see around us. And we are indeed thankful. We want to thank God for the glory of his creation. But also think that this is a time of the year when hummingbirds and other birds are starting their migration. They're starting to go south. They're coming from the north. They're passing through. They're looking 
for something to eat and uh, we just want to be mindful. If any of you have any nectar producing flowers, don't cut them down yet. The, the birds are still making use of them. But uh, this, we're coming into a time of prayer. We certainly do want to remember our pastor who is not feeling well today. She would be here if she could. Uh, Joan, Pastor Joan is going to bring her message and I'm telling you, you're in for a treat. It is a good message. It's gonna give you something to think about. I know it has me. But when we lift up our prayers today, uh, I, I would encourage you to remember our shut-ins. I try to follow our shut-ins and keep in touch with them, see how they are doing. It seems as though this week has been the week for falling, for falls. Um, and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring up three persons I was in touch with. They, just in recent days, they've taken a fall. Uh, Ted Filmer, he, he was at home and, and he fell backwards, hit his head pretty hard. Uh, he may have actually fractured some ribs, but he is home and he's recovering. Each day he says he's getting a little bit better, but he's still experiencing a good bit of pain. He does have someone coming in to do light housework. His family is aware of his situation, so we're trying to keep an eye on him. Ted Filmer, Kay Tarr, you may, you know, some of you, you Good many of you remember Kay. She was the organist, the church organist at one time. She lives at home. She was taking the dog out one morning and uh, when she turned to come back to the house, she, she stumbled and fell between the fence and her son's car. He was away at work, but there she was between the fence and the car. Nobody would have seen her driving by but there, there was a neighbor who came and asked if he could help get her up, although he had a bad back. So he found another officer, police officer, retired, who lives in the neighborhood. They came, helped her get up and back on her feet, back into the house. These are not people who would have had any reason to come to her house. Well, when she was sharing this with, with Nancy Swagger, and Nancy said, you know what happened? You know, God sent a couple of angels to help pick you up that day. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, I really tend to believe that. Uh, uh, another person, Carol McLean, she's at uh, Victoria House up in Austin Town. She actually had fallen just a couple of hours before I arrived one day to, to visit her this week. It was after lunch, she was in her room, she was transferring from her wheelchair to a recliner and fell, knocked over a piece of furniture. And so she had bruising on her forearm and on her face. She said, funny thing, she said, uh, a nurse happened to be coming by, stopped in and helped me up because I couldn't get up. And then who should arrive but uh, two children. She, she has a son and a daughter and they usually visit alternately so she can enjoy visiting each one. But it just so happened that they both showed up. And she said, did you plan it this way? I said, no, we just, it, we just arrived on the same day, the same time. It was right after she had, had fallen. So there, once again, just signs that, you know, God's present in this world. And uh, we do thank him for that. We want to remember our shut-ins. Uh, another person, not a shut-in, but uh, another person who has fallen just uh, this recently, uh, Joyce A., she took a fall, she fell right on her face. Um, she may have broken some bones there, I don't know. But I did see a picture of her and she looks pretty beat up. She was in the hospital. I, I was informed just before the service that she is being released today to come back home. So we want to remember Joyce A. Also, uh, uh, Pat Hassel's son, Brian, is in the hospital. Uh, so request prayers for, for Brian. Now there may be other concerns that uh, you would like for us to remember. Um, do we have any out here, any prayer concerns that you would like us to include? Anyone? All right, let us come before the Lord in this time of prayer. Gracious God, we, uh, we are so grateful to you for the gift of life and for the opportunity to live it in a way that would bring you uh, pleasure and honor and glory. I thank you that we can be gathered together here, the called out ones, the church, the faithful in this place, just to lift you high 
and to make sure that you occupy the throne of our hearts. We come here to worship you, but we also are here to receive from you your word planted in our hearts to bear fruit for all eternity, not just for our own benefit, but certainly that, but even more for the benefit of others. And so we desire as we leave this place that we may be your servants in the world and where there's an opportunity that we can help to pick someone up or we can offer an encouraging word or be a hand on someone's shoulder. You have given us abilities and you've also given us availabilities so that we can make a difference in this world, make it a little bit more like your kingdom. We pray for our pastor, Pastor Joyce, and we are grateful for her leadership, uh, so thankful for the word that she brings to us on Sunday mornings. We know that you are speaking through her to us. And we ask that you would uh, help to bring healing to her. May she experience your spirit surrounding her, uh, help her to get a good night's rest, help her to have strength for the living of each day, Help to bring her back to health and wholeness, doing the things that she loves and is passionate about. I pray that you would be with Pastor Joan too as she leads in worship and as she brings the message that comes to us from Joyce. Uh, Heavenly Father, we, we lift up to you all of these concerns that we have mentioned and all of those that uh, are silent within our hearts. We lift them up to you, lay them before you, Maybe your will be done in our lives. May we continue on that journey, following you close to your side until one day we arrive home in your eternal kingdom. For all these things we do pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. God will raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of God's Our scripture lesson for today starts with Isaiah 43. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians in the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your king. This is what the Lord says, he who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and the reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness 
and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Now from Isaiah chapter 42. Here is my servant whom I, whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will, put the, I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his teaching, the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says, the creator of the heavens, who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all the springs from it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you to righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and the light of the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, this is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place, and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you islands and all who live in them, let the wilderness and its towns raise their voices. Let the settlements where Kedar lives rejoice. Let the people of Sila sing for joy. Let them shout from the mountaintops. Let them give glory to the Lord and proclaim his praise in the islands. The Lord will march out like a champion. Like a warrior, he will stir up his zeal. With a shout, he will raise the battle cry and will triumph over his enemies. Now, if you'll please stand as you're able for the reading of our gospel from John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for Pastor Joyce and for her faithfulness and for all the ways that she is open to your leading as she prepares uh, her words for us each week. I thank you for the privilege of sharing her words 
with each one gathered this day. May all of us be open to the encouragement, the comfort, the joy, and the challenge that these words invoke. Amen. Last week, Pastor Joyce talked about the importance of Sabbath rest. She asks, did any of you take time for Sabbath rest? Soaking in the presence of the Lord, taking time to rest and listen for God. Maybe soaking in God's creation, helping to refresh and prepare you for all the new things that are coming your way. Today, we're beginning a new church season. Rally Day was today, and we celebrated the beginning of a new Sunday school year as we ease into the fall schedule, ministries, and activities. Life is full of new beginnings, new experiences, and brand new things. The scriptures point this out to us time and time again. Throughout the Bible, we see God doing new things. Last week, we looked at creation. There, everything was new. Each day and each experience was a revelation. As time went on, God continued to work through people in new ways, sharing new revelations to bring to them and through them. The stories and people we cherish in the Bible all experienced God in some new way or brought God's message to the people around them with new insights and calls to action. God made a covenant with the people who had become the nation of Israel. God interacted with the prophets and various people whose stories are told throughout the Old Testament. Then after the prophets and after Israel had been conquered, God sent Jesus the Messiah, but in a way most people had not expected and many would not accept. Jesus came and brought a new message of love, forgiveness, and hope to all humankind, but many people were looking for something else. They were expecting a conquering hero who would swoop in with an army and overthrow the tyranny of Rome, freeing God's people and making them once again into a mighty nation. But that was not what God had in mind. Jesus, the Messiah, came to restore the relationship between God and humanity. Jesus came to bring a new message of hope and love. He taught people how to live godly lives, how to follow God's laws in a loving and caring manner, and how to love and serve others. Many people responded and followed Christ's call, but many others heard what he said and were left baffled. They knew how to follow God. They had been taught for centuries how to follow the law. The things this man said and taught were not the same as what they had been taught and, if put into practice, would change everything. Who did he think he was? Their well-ordered lives were being challenged and upset. They would not stand for it. Jesus was an unexpected version of an expected thing. When I first read that line, it just captured my attention. Jesus was an unexpected version of an expected thing. People had been promised a Messiah who would deliver them from earthly bondage. Jesus came to do just that, deliver us from earthly bondage to sin and death and bring us eternal life. People had prayed for the Messiah to come soon, yet when he came, he was not what they expected. 
Some heard and believed, while others turned away or plotted against him. His message was new and unexpected. People reacted. Some reacted negatively, but many were transformed by the power of the salvation which Jesus brought. The Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, and the church began to grow. The disciples spread the word. Then Paul and others were called to spread the word to the Gentiles so that the whole world would be part of God's kingdom. Word spread. People believed. The church grew. And the church continues to grow. Places like Africa and the Philippines especially are experiencing great growth and transformation with powerful, spirit-filled worship, healings, and an outpouring of God's love through the active presence of the Holy Spirit. What new things does God have in store for us here at Western Reserve? What is God calling us to be and to do? How can we best share God's love with others in our area, our nation, and the world? What can we be doing to help people who are overwhelmed and hurting? How can we help others to know the peace of Christ in their lives? In what ways can God use us to bring them comfort and joy? In the Old Testament scripture lessons today, the prophet Isaiah is talking to the people of Israel who have experienced some really difficult times. Through the prophet, God reminds the people that they are his chosen people. New things are coming. God reminds the people he is always with them. The people of God had been dispersed throughout the known world to countries and lands that worshiped and believed in other gods. Yet these people knew the one true God. God reminds them of the exodus from Egypt where he made a way for the people to cross through the sea. But then goes on to tell them not to dwell in the past. Do not dwell in the past, says verse 18. But dwelling in the past, it's so easy to do. Remember? Remember when our churches were packed. Remember what we did then. Remember when the world was different. Remember what we did then. Remember? Remember. The world was different then. We remember and think of the good times, and we get stuck there. We focus on the good things, that were dear to us and helped to shape us. We remember the people and places that warmed our hearts and gave us joy. But if we're not careful, we can get stuck there. Do not dwell in the past, God says. Why not? Well, for one thing, we never remember the complete past we often focus on the positive things and overlook the negative. Also, living and dwelling in the past shuts our eyes to what God has in store in the present. If we are looking behind us, we can't see what's coming in front of us. We can't dream the dreams that God has for our future. We're so focused on what has already happened that we miss all the beauty and possibilities God has for us in the future. In Isaiah chapter 42, we hear, I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. 
God is declaring new things are coming, and the people are to listen. They are to hear what God is saying. The promises continue in chapter 42. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. In faithfulness, he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. This is a prophecy about the Messiah and what he will do. God is restoring God's people, expanding their call and ministry to all the peoples of the world. Isaiah continues in chapter 43. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? God is at work in this world. God is active and moving. God's power is present, moving forward in the world today. We are part of that movement. We are called to do new things and reach new people. Jesus called us to go to all the world. The church has tried, but we still have people right in our own neighborhoods who do not know the saving and healing love of Christ. We have people who are broken, empty, and alone. We have people who desperately need to do a new thing. The scripture calls the people to focus on God at work now. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. God was doing a new thing then. God is doing a new thing today. It is springing up, but do we perceive it? Do we feel and know that God is actively with us? Do we share our faith with others so they know what grounds us and what gives us strength? Do we share the reality that the God who gives us strength and mighty foundation also gives us wings to lift us up and help us soar? Or have we become blind to the reality that God is present and active with us even here, even now? Sometimes we get into a routine. We get comfortable with our schedules and our plans and forget to leave time for new experiences, new dreams. We know where we need to be and when we need to be there. We follow a plan. But what happens when plans change? What do we do then? Do we panic and do everything we can to get back on schedule? Or do we open ourselves up to the possibilities that God may be working in the disruptions. We have work to do. We have ministries and services to complete. Pastor Joyce tells us there are cherished and fulfilling ministries that will continue. There may be some previous ministries which are ready to be revived, but it's also time to move forward, push ahead, and try some new things. Some of them will be successful. Some of them might flop. But it's important that we try new ministries 
and open ourselves to where God is calling us now and in the future. We need to focus on the needs of the people around us and around the world, finding ways to share God's love with them, loving them as Jesus loves. How can we best share God's love with others in our area, our nation, and the world? What can we be doing to help people who are overwhelmed and hurting know the peace of Christ in their lives? In what ways can God use us to bring comfort, joy, and healing to their lives? Pastor Joyce reminds us we are beginning some new things. We are starting to create our ministry teams for 2025. What ministries, she asks, would you like to see happen here? Where and how would you like to participate? Is there something new you would like us to try? Have you had an idea of something we might want to do? Does it sound easy or does it sound outrageous? She's asking because sometimes Pastor Joyce says, it's the outrageous things that really bring God to life. Sometimes the outrageous, seemingly impossible things are right where God wants us to be. They challenge us and bring us out of our shells. They show the world that things can be done and changes can be made. They show the world that love wins. Pastor Joyce has questions for us today. She asks, how are we as a congregation changing the world and teaching the world about Christ? How are we currently sharing God's love with others? And where is God calling each of us to continue ministry or to try something new? Do you have an idea or an answer to prayer that seems a bit daunting? Fabulous, says our pastor. God has done that to her so many times. It's worth pursuing. God is doing a new thing. Why not do it through you? God is always with us, encouraging us forward on our walks of faith. Where is your walk headed in the next year? Where is God calling you? Where do you feel God is calling this congregation? What does God have in store for our church and our community? In the midst of a chaotic, frightening, and painful world, God is still at work. We, as a church, are called to do bold, world-changing ministry empowered by the Holy Spirit. God is calling us to follow the Messiah who changed the world. Will you drop everything and follow? Will you change your life to bring about the kingdom of God? Will you serve the Messiah? Will you wholeheartedly do a new thing? Amen. And indeed, it was my privilege today to share these words of Pastor Joyce with you. She has given us much to ponder as we consider the, the words of encouragement, comfort, and challenge that she has shared with us. Let us pray. Oh God, we come to you today ready for you to do a new thing in our lives and in the life of the church. We ask you to reveal to us where you would have us go as individuals and as a congregation. Show us the needs of those around us and how we can be of service. 
Open our hearts to hear your call and open our minds to respond. We are busy, Lord, but not too busy for you. Be with us as we dream of the future and as we live out our ministry through and for you. Amen. As you are able, I invite you to stand for our closing hymn. challenge to lean into the new and we can do that knowing that indeed Christ goes before us and surrounds us and encourages us. So as you go into this new week, as you meditate on these words of our pastor, of what new thing you might bring to the life of this congregation, know that you go with the love of God with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit upon you. Amen.